ഹലോ ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വെൽക്കം ടു എപ്പിസോഡ് തേർട്ടി സെവൻ ഓഫ് സുമൻ വേഴ്സസ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ടുഡേസ് എപ്പിസോഡ് ഐ ഹാവ് ആ അമേസിംഗ് ഗെസ്റ്റ് ഈസ് മിസ്റ്റർ അനന്ത് നാരായൺ ഫ്രം ഡയലോഗ് ഇൻ ദ ഡാക്ക് ന before we start the show i would like to recall a very famous saying that uh, all the beautiful things are done in the dark now let us understand what is dialogue in the dark about to talk more on that i am calling in mr anand narayanan ji on the show mr anand welcome to suman versus human hi suman pleasure to be here thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of your podcast so mr anand as i told you i believe that world's most beautiful things happen in the dark and what is this dialogue in the dark about absolutely i think when uh, when we talk about uh, you know beautiful things happen in the dark the very first thing that any human encounters is their birth which happens in the dark <laughs> and uh, dialogue in the dark is uh, one such experience which uh, you know i would say reforms people uh, that's why i had to compare it with uh, birth here yeah. because a new idea is birthed in people you know when they go through this experience so what happens is that uh, we use darkness that is pitch darkness uh, in our experience centers and to just give a small background of uh, uh, you know uh, our centers our brand so dialogue in the dark is actually a global uh, brand uh, which was conceptualized in uh, 1988 in germany so it's been about 35 years oh. since its inception and uh, dialogue in the dark has been present in uh, i mean uh, has been presented in more than about 41 countries including india oh. and uh, dialogue in the dark has had some uh, you know phenomenal uh, you know global impact in terms of uh, you know uh, sensitizing more than 10 million visitors uh, across the world and being presented to some of the most prestigious forums such as the world economic forum mm. uh, ashoka the thai uh, global uh, platform or even the ypos and the eos of the world have uh, witnessed dialogue in the dark because of its powerful message on social inclusion of persons with disabilities through empathy so uh, now coming back to uh, uh, dialogue in the dark at a concept level so what happens is uh, people people go through um, recreated real life experience in pitch darkness which is designed for about 45 minutes where they encounter real life experiences which will make them understand how our other four senses play such an important role when our most dominant faculty that is our vision is suspended so people will encounter scenarios such as uh, taking a walk through a park in the dark or uh, getting lost in a maze in the dark or playing even cricket in complete darkness can you imagine that suman oh. and uh, and even uh, operating computers in the dark where they will purely understand how our sensory capabilities help us cope up and still we are able to perform tasks but while people perform task and you know understand how it's done that's when they will start drawing the parallel of their experience to the life of a person with visual impairment mm-hmm. because they are also in their shoes right now if they have to you know think about it metaphorically and that's when they will you know start realizing that if if they are able to you know cope up and still perform tasks and still feel uh, you know capable that's mm-hmm. exactly the potential of a person with visual impairment also and uh, soon enough people you know start understanding that the so called disabled are not disabled but differently abled right mm-hmm. but the breakthrough doesn't end there but when they when people come out and when they meet the person you know who guided them through the whole journey that's when they'll be baffled to realize that this person himself is a person with vision i am lost here anant i'm sorry for interrupting you now mm-hmm. you said it is an experience of 45 minutes in the dark this experience is for the normal person who is sighted right correct when this sighted person is taken into the dark chambers how will he or she walk mm-hmm. or go through the chambers the rooms the cricket and whatever activity you just spoke because because they are not familiar with the blind exactly. person's world right no you're you're right suman in fact uh, that's where i was coming so when they come out of that experience they will meet this guide who was guiding them throughout the whole experience okay so there will be someone guiding people, them in- yes so okay. when people enter this uh, dark 
experience zone that we have hmm. uh, because we don't allow any light emitting objects inside uh, suman oh. uh, so yeah all no, the no phones, camera watches, flashlights on <laughs> nothing nothing so okay. you walk into an environment where you can't even see your own hands oh. so in that immersive dark space there will be a voice a very friendly voice that will you know all of a sudden show up and this person will will start guiding them and since this person is the only you know uh, hope for the visitors who are going to walk into it mm-hmm. they will start trusting and they will start you know uh, working with this person very closely and start connecting with him at a basic human level and that is exactly what people will reflect on towards the end because when they come out and realize that this person who guided them itself was person with visual impairment that's when they realize the larger question oh, of hey if i so, was able to so you mean to say a visually impaired a blind person will be guiding them inside the room right correct so a blind person will be a guiding sighted person here here correct that's right that's right it is completely opposite like where in, in yes in yes we are world, creating a role reversal yeah yes amazing so this um ironic twist is what you know baffles people because the first question that pops up in their head is hey if when i mean if i was able to connect with this person and just you know uh work with them or 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 trust them and and just uh you know uh be a part of this ecosystem so naturally uh, without you know any inhibitions or the bias you mm. know when i didn't know about this person's identity then why is there a, a systemic sympathy outside or a subconscious sympathy with which we operate when we when we see the disability mm. so that's when people realize that they need to go beyond this conditioning and this bias that they have and and they should and and they realize the power of empathy in order to exercise inclusion because that's what that role reversal does because in the dark now you were disabled yeah <laughs> you know yeah. meaning the the person who went in into into the world of a person with visual impairment was actually was actually the disabled person here so what are we talking about you know that's the kind of thought process uh, is, is what hits people and uh, it completely gives them a very different view of uh, you know how they have been uh, you know thought about disability or how they have been seeing uh, uh, people with disability and mm-hmm. uh, and everything just flashes in front of them and it kind of gets demystified and they see a very new uh, you know perspective towards them once they are out of this session are they happy about it or they are excited about it or they go through a sadness what kind of reactions they reflect on their faces okay like you said there are shades uh, of emotions that people go through but generally for many of them it's a moment of truth uh, suman mm. but a moment of truth not from a way that they feel really bad about you know how they have led their life rather it is a moment of truth where they now feel inspired to change this pattern mm. that has been existing mm. yeah. so when uh, they come out uh, for example uh, there is a, a, I, i don't know even now when i think about you know what we have done this is the uh, you know experience that comes to my mind immediately so mm. there was a visitor once i you know met after uh, his experience at dialogue and drag when he came out but until then he had a very sorry image about mm. persons with disabilities and we never uh, told him that the person who was guiding them was a person with disability so that he will go in with that bias so we wanted him to completely eject out of that and you know look at it from a very different lens so he went through this experience for its entirety and he came out and when he met uh you know one of our visually impaired guides who guided him mm. uh, and and he told me that hey until this experience i have only uh, you know seen them as uh, uh, you know a person with disability but after going through dialogue in the dark i think i want to reframe it and i want to call them as people with possibility that was the powerful you know uh, i would say shift that happens when one goes through dialogue in the dark uh, suman anand that do you, you mind if i change. if i play some of the testimonies what uh, your consumers have given to you sure you could my dear listeners these are some great experiences what people have experienced in dialogue in the dark hi i'm garima and i work for alkin laboratories and uh, this is an experience which i've never had before and this is the first time i realized that this something like this should be made mandatory 
for all uh, corporates and uh, not only schools and colleges but everyone uh, should go through something like this this is an experience of a lifetime and this just kinds of reveals a lot of facts which you were unaware of earlier and it helps you to kind of empathize and probably know that there is a life beyond what we actually call life thank you um i think it is once in a lifetime of experience uh, we work with palliative kids and we do have blind kids but i think we can never put ourselves in their shoes until we went through this experience it was uh, altogether a new perspective of life and appreciation to the life that we have as people so yeah thank you so much yeah anand ji next thing yes. i want to ask you is 2016 you have joined dialogue in that arc right that's correct you had also other options to take care uh, you also had other opportunities to join yes why did you prefer dialogue in the dark as your career opportunity i think suman there are uh, two things to it one is uh, as a management student for me it was very fascinating to see how a social enterprise operated like a business in the sense uh, there was a structure there was process there was uh, you know people were very uh, passionate they were data driven so it didn't so when there was this uh, you know typical image of how they looked at social enterprises as ngo mm. this organization was a breath of fresh air for me mm. where i could see so much professionalism in the approach and and impact was at the heart of the business mm. where they really wanted to make a difference and uh, and in fact this is something that i always we say dialogue in the dark doesn't stand for social cause rather it stands for a uh, social change wow so i think that approach kind of inspired me as a youngster to not look at social work after my uh, you know after my retirement or or later in my life rather i wanted to start off in a space where i am able to champion this and make a make a difference at a very young age and and see how i can do more and more of such good work mm-hmm. in the future and i think that is another important uh, moment for me which kind of reassured that you know what i'm doing right now is important uh, not just for me but for a lot of people so when i went to this uh, school i uh, i think we did a session uh to kind of spread awareness about uh, disability and uh, how uh, students need to be more inclusive as uh, citizens because it's, it's, it starts from there right another experience kind of was important for me to take this decision or i would say reassured me about it uh which is i went to a school in hyderabad where we hosted uh, disability awareness programs for uh, kids is this a normal school yes an institution which did not have uh, a persons with disabilities okay. Uh, okay. both at a staff level and at a student level mm-hmm. so uh, we went to the school uh, in order to create awareness about uh, social inclusion and mainstreaming of persons with disabilities into uh, you know into the society uh, so and because we believe that it's important to you know go to youngsters at a formative age to you know seed these ideas so that when they become leaders or when they become you know uh, i mean when they grow older these are the things that will you know come back to them as principles and values which will determine their behavior as uh, and actions mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so we wanted to go there and talk to them and uh, we asked some innocent questions to them to understand you know how they see it and i'm talking about 8 year olds and 9 year olds here mm-hmm. so to one of the students when we asked this question of uh, uh, where do you think uh, you know uh, persons with disabilities are and um, i think uh, yeah I, we spoke to a couple of people and uh, they said uh, you know yeah they are in um, orphanages or they are in a special school mm-hmm. and uh, you know some answers yeah, like that and there was this one particular student who said uh, yeah i i know i know where they are i have always seen them in uh, you know in jubilee's check post mm-hmm. and uh, begging that kind of shook me yeah yeah mm-hmm. that kind of shook me because imagine uh, a child is looking at a diverse identity group from an economic uh, you know status yeah. standpoint yeah. and has decided that you know that's where they belong mm-hmm. and nobody has even taught him all of this mm-hmm. it's about how he has encountered a set of people which has kind of registered in his mind that you know this is where they are generally and that is you know the the standard of living of people like that and i think that was kind of a a moment of truth for me uh, suman where we thought 
hey, I think this is what has been happening for years that nowhere people have seen or not uh, not everybody, many of them have not seen a person with visual impairment or a person with disability in their mainstream society. For example, in their own social circles, they have not had people or they have not dealt with any per any person with any kind of impairment at any level for them to know that they are just like us and they or they also belong to the mainstream society like us mm-hmm. where they are also equally capable and i think that is what was important for us to change to tell them that early encounters towards persons with disabilities is important for kids to realize that they also deserve respect they also deserve opportunities and they also belong to the society where you know we we are living right now yeah. so i think that equity or that i would say the sense of social equity has to come in mm-hmm. and that was the inspiration for me to stick to this and and champion this uh, all these years uh, so man apart from my affiliation towards the company from a management point of view the day when when you uh, joined dialogue in the dark i want mm-hmm. you to share your personal experience in the dark in the dark yeah. uh suman i think uh, everybody as a part of the hiring process in dialogue in the dark has to mm. go through the experience of dialogue in the dark before <laughs> they join huh. so i uh though i am an intern and they know that you know i am i am not a guaranteed uh, uh what do you call it hire for them mm. they still uh, you know sent me for the experience and i didn't know that the people who were guiding were person with visual impairment they kept it as a surprise to us also and that was the beauty of the company because i think they really wanted to know what people experience or what people go through for us to know you know how responsible we are in this mm-hmm. uh, in this company so uh, when i went through and i came out mm-hmm. i think that to be very honest until then i was like that 9 year old kid mm-hmm. that i have never seen them in a in a in a very confident manner this person who guided me suman was a was a woman who was visually impaired she dressed up she looked so smart she was very well dressed mm. amazing proficiency in english mm. amazing confidence mm. brilliant social skills brilliant emotional intelligence mm. and i was baffled some of my own friends were not that good in general <laughs> uh you know of my age group or or at the time when you know i was uh, i experienced dialogue with rag and i met somebody so so inspiring and that for me it was uh, it was a breakthrough i i yeah. said where you know uh, where i you know i saw somebody so different and that changed my idea of a person with disability and their capability and uh, you know how they are as people it's not necessarily like how you know you are seeing in pop culture or in tv or in our cinema uh, there are people who can carry themselves so well and can be amazing you know as a personality and i think we need to see more and more of that and and but but for that we need to be inclusive and we need to you know make the society accessible i think that's where dialogue indra comes in and fills up the gap but my question is still partially not answered okay. how was your experience <laughs> in the dark okay my experience in the dark i think initially uh, i found it to be out of my uh, comfort zone where i felt very disoriented mm. but after a point uh, uh, suman i'll be very honest with you i got very comfortable mm. in the sense it was very calming it was so calming and uh, i could all of a sudden i became very very sharp what i mean by that is i could hear things more clearly i could focus on things very clearly i could become so sensitive towards things around me that i started you know becoming more cognitive and uh, yeah. i felt like a superhuman for that you know 30 40 minutes and i realized that i have not been uh, you know utilizing my other four senses which are so important mm-hmm. and i think that was one of my key learnings when i came out to realize that how i have taken my eyesight and also all my four senses for granted that i have not put them to their you know capabilities anand i also want to share one real world example or i can call it story with you mm-hmm. few years ago i got a friend request from a woman okay. on facebook i used to give presentations in engineering colleges back those days regarding personality development and stuff like that then i thought she must be one of my students but later when mm-hmm. i accepted her uh, friend request on facebook she said that she is working with uh, infosys hyderabad and now mm-hmm. she came to know about me from one of her friend 
and she wanted to take my opinion or advice whatever you call it on her uh, personal life because she said that she uh, got a, a marriage proposal from a blind guy and she mm -hmm. never know she never experienced any blind person before in her life so she mm. wanted to take my advice because i'm a blind so right. i just told her one thing i asked her to go visit a uh, dialogue in the dark in in orbit mall you will understand everything back then she went to in orbit mall she took this experience in dialogue in the dark in hyderabad and after that session the other day she calls me and she says that no suman now i got complete idea of how a blind person can live his life above that the person who have guided me inside is mm -hmm. appearing so normal he is traveling to the office his office all on his own without any support he is going back to his home after the closing times which is in the night all alone he is cooking his own food he is you know managing all his lifestyle all by his own when he could live a life like me then why can't right. i marry a person who is disabled and live a normal life and then she accepted his proposal and they both are happily married now fantastic yeah that's really really heartening to hear uh, suman thank you so much for sharing that yeah. i'm really glad to know uh, of how dialogue in the dark has helped you know people to take such i would say important decisions in their life where it could change them forever in fact uh, suman uh, speaking yeah. of such important decisions i think many a times when people uh, you know come out uh, you know of dialogue in the dark one is they talk about you know how grateful they feel uh, you know about their other four senses and how they talk about uh, you know now they have understood the importance of empathy mm -hmm. and and how that is so powerful in order to uh, become more of a mindful uh, mindfully empathetic person and all of that mm -hmm. but what is something that we are very proud of uh, today when we think about our 10 year journey as suman that many corporate leaders who are also our visitors who went through dialogue in the dark mm -hmm. actually after the experience went back to their organization worked with their hr uh, in terms of you know amending policies as amending job rules mm -hmm. making reasonable accommodations and and creating that accessible environment mm -hmm. and they have created job opportunities in fact i'm so proud to share that through dialogue in the dark 4000 persons with disabilities have found job in corporate sector across 18 sectors amazing and i think uh, that that i think that is what you know if i could uh, if i could summarize social impact to social equity is all about and for this team suman versus human salutes you and your team and your organization for this great contribution you are doing to the world thank you thank you so much suman in a one line if i ask you to explain a normal person why they should visit dialogue in the dark i think one is for people to become more human i think that is the capsule our capsulated version of what i want to say uh, i think we as people have i think somewhere forgotten to be to be more human uh, suman we have yes. all become so carried away by our life where we i know there's nothing wrong in you know being uh, being busy and being you know goal oriented but somewhere i think human connection human connections are so important and i think we have all become you know uh, i would say very individualistically uh, very individualistic and very important very independent that you know we have become silos when we are all together as well mm -hmm. i think it's important to break those barriers and become more human again and uh, be Uh, a part of each other's growth story mm. by really really you know including everyone and uh, creating uh, you know because we are very rich in diversity as a country yeah. and we have not mainstreamed 
uh, uh, many, you know, diverse identity groups. There. I'm not just talking about a person with visual impairment or a person with disability. I'm talking about, uh, you know, a uh, transgenerational workforce where, yes. uh, you know, uh, three, four generations are working where we still a lot, we still face a lot of, you know, stereotypes and biases yes. that we're talking about. Yes. Women in workplace. We're talking about uh, members, uh, people from the LGBTQIA community. Mm. Uh, we are talking about other, uh, you know, disabilities and the intersections in that. So I think there is a place for everybody, and I think it's it's high time we, uh, you know, wake up to that and uh, and what do you call it? Untap, or I would say tap into the uh, tap into this untapped potential that we have not seen yet. And uh, everybody is capable of something uh, spectacular, and I think we need to recognize that and we need to, uh, you know, put that to use and also. Uh, you know, uh, make them understand their own potential and uh, make them socio and economically independent. What are the locations you are available in India at the moment? See, uh, prior to COVID, we were in three locations, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Chennai. Hmm. This is where we were running our centers uh, over a span of about 10 years. Hmm. Uh, in 2020, we shut shop and uh, in 2022, we again reopened this in Bombay. Let us come to the business point of it. If, if mm-hmm. someone wants to start Dialogue in the Dark in some city of this country or for that matter, anywhere in the world. So do mm-hmm. you have any model which, which can accommodate this requirement? See, when it comes to Dialogue in the Dark in India, uh, the scope is with us because we have acquired the master uh, license to run Dialogue in the Dark in, in this country. Mm-hmm. With regards to running it outside of this country you the uh, people can approach dialogue uh, dialogue in the dark the global body uh, which is called the uh, dialogue social enterprise hmm. we you know they can approach them and uh, and they will be more than happy to understand the requirement and uh, and what vision you have for dialogue in the dark in their respective country and uh, and they can take it up now we have come to the stage where i have this question for all my guests coming on to suman versus human and you will Definitely have no option to say no. You have to answer this, Mr. Anand. Sure, sure. If I give you all the superpowers in your hand to change something in this country, so what is that you are going to change? The one thing in this country. And you have all the superpowers. I gave you the superpowers. Okay, that's a very interesting question. I've always thought about it from a you know personal angle, uh, where I want to either uh, fly or <laughs> <laughs> it's always been for personal benefit. And uh, if I have to look at it from a country, but that's actually a good question, Suman. I think the first thing I would uh, do is. Uh, I think we are all running short on water at some level or other, uh, Suman. Yes. And it's a scary situation for the future. I think I will do everything possible like if 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 i have the power to create water hmm. uh i will do that i think i'll put more water into the water uh, into the soil and hmm. uh, bring back stability or bring back abundance into this country hmm. so that nobody suffers because water is such an important natural resource and we are running short of it yes. uh, so i think yeah that's something that i will do i think i'll be the hydro uh, or the hydrator of the society <laughs> Great thought. But I have a question here again. Mm-hmm. No doubt with all the superpowers, you are going to add water, right? Mm-hmm. What if people started consuming it? <laughs> what people start consuming it? Yeah. Hmm. One day again, the I don't know. I should, gone, right? like, like how we have dialogue in the dark, you know, as an experience for people to understand the importance of eye care. I don't know. I should come up with a simulation for them to realize what it is to be without water. Ah, and there, there you so are. People, there you are. Yep. Yeah. So I think I'll come up with something like that, which can be slightly, what do you call it? It can shake shake their normalcy. But I think that's how many people learn, including me. That's how I learned. <laughs> I, recently, uh, I, I recently gone through an article and that mm-hmm. was... A shocking article for me because I was amazed after knowing that that every human being mm-hmm. wastes around 98% of water in a day. Only 2% mm. of water is for effective consumption. I think that's, uh, that's, I don't know, I can call it criminal waste, I could say, not just waste. That's yes. criminal waste. Yes. And uh, I think... percent of the water. Each day. Mm-hmm. That's scary. That's scary. And I think it's high time 
all of us uh, you know make a conscious effort because even i think uh, last week uh, i'm sure you would have also come across they're talking about bangalore's yeah. water crisis yes and how yes. they are heading into a dry summer which is going to be super scary for a city that's overpopulated yes. and very completely urbanized so i think that and and many of the metro cities are are bracing to a similar situation down down the year you know what if from tomorrow there is no water imagine your life i think that's uh, everything everything goes for at us uh, suman we are all uh, we are all what uh, 70% uh, water as yeah. people yeah. so imagine a uh, 70% of uh, us is not going to be available anymore yes. <laughs> outside yes. is scary it was lovely 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 talking to you mr anand so Same inspiring here, so inspiring thank you so much thank for you. giving thank me this so great opportunity to host you on suman versus human my pleasure yeah my pleasure i had a wonderful time connecting and uh, lovely to see the work that you're doing and uh, i'm sure uh, you know this is uh, suman versus human is only going to get better i really love the name by the way thank and uh, i can see the passion with which you're building this brand and my best wishes to you